And welcome back all you capitalist pigs. I am shooting this, normally we are doing this video now on Monday. Um, well, let me start over. My name is Jason Stapleton, if you've never been here before. This is the Forex Market Preview. Normally I shoot this video on Monday morning when I get into the office. And uh, today I'm doing it on a Saturday afternoon because on Monday we are having the ratio room open uh, to anyone who wants to attend. It's, it's a brand new room that uh, we started and uh, that we're going to be running live every single day during the New York morning session and we're going to be trading ratios and, and uh, you know harmonics in that room and it's kind of a day trading room in there and I gave uh, two weeks out there for anybody who wanted to attend doesn't cost you anything come and see what it is that you do and if you want to stay fine and if not uh, that's cool um, I had intended for that to be a rather small uh, venue and I you know a lot of people think that that was some kind of like sales trick or something but it really wasn't we had intended you know to have around 200 people um involved with that and i didn't know that there would be much more than that because of the number of people who um uh you know after the new year who typically come around for that kind of stuff and so i neglected to ask darren to actually restrict the registration um both because i didn't really know what the response would be and it because i'm you know kind of uh, kind of uh disheveled sometimes when it comes to those types of things. I don't I don't think uh I don't always think real clearly through the entire process, but he forgot to do it. We have 2,200 people who are signed up to attend, so it's going to be huge and uh not exactly sure what we're going to do, but we're going to figure something out. So um, tomorrow morning, that starts at 7, and uh, of course, if you guys want to attend, feel free. I'll drop a link or something under this video to, to make sure that happens. Um, we are going to have to switch the room, though, I think, because the room that I had planned on using, we can't use for it. So if you're planning on attending tomorrow, expect an email in your inbox this weekend that uh, is, gonna, is going to key you into where you need to, where you need to go because the old room's not going to work. But I digress. I wanted to go through a couple of things with you today uh, and take a look at some stuff that I talked about last week. I, I am going to pimp out just very, very briefly because it's a there's a good training exercise in here. Uh, some of the stuff that I turned over to the syndicate this week. I have a six-figure syndicate for any of you all who are interested in that. But uh, again, we'll get to that in a minute. And I normally wouldn't, you know, wouldn't put anything out about that because you guys don't have access to it. A lot of you don't. But there's a really good training piece in here on the pound that I want to talk about. And it's going to tie in very closely with what we're talking about here with the Euro USD. Now, I've only thrown the Euro USD in here because it's one that everybody tends to want to see. You got a lot of people who trade it. There's not really a very good setup here. Um, as I take a look at this, what I would expect to see is probably a press back down into this support level. This is the next area. This 126.36 area is where I would expect to see the market go. It'd be odd for it to retrace all the way back up here. Um, but a couple of different ways to play this, uh, assuming that these you know these lines hold. Watch for, um, again, I'm looking at this on a daily chart. So if we drop this down to a four-hour chart or whatever, you look for that double bottom. You work 60-minute, look for the double bottom, whatever the case may be. Look for some sort of indication here, whatever method that you might use, to identify where that, that this at is actually going to be a pretty nice area to look for a buy. And then you can go ahead and look for a long position here, and you're probably good back up to 29.50 where that previous support level was. That support level is going to be some resistance as we come into that, because as you look left, as I scrunch up my chart here, you've got a little bit more over there already. So what I'm kind of looking at here is potentially the market to press down into here, find some support, and then rally back up into 2950s. Now, if you take your stops and you put them kind of below that spike low looking left, okay, then you've got actually a really nice risk-reward profile on this trade um, and that it could produce a, a pretty nice profit. Now, if we blow right through there, the, the, the thing is, if we blow right through there, the next stop is all the way down here. So we're running all the way to 121.50s. Now there are going to be some, you know, opportunities to get on board that move and, and go south with it when it falls. But right now, you know, we're we're in a pretty good position to see this market come into a nice support level that is the edge of a cliff. And if we get over that cliff, if we fall off of it, we're more than likely going to 2170s. So, um, and we'll talk about that if and when that actually happens. How? What's the best way to play that? But uh, 
right now that's what I'm watching on the uh, on the euro USD now if we go higher what are we going to look for well there's a couple of support levels in here again 12950 if the market just turns around and runs straight north here to 12950 um, again another interesting place where you could potentially look to short because as this market declines you can look at it and all I got to do is just bring in my little line tool and on this decline and it doesn't matter where I find identify my high points at the market continues to make lower highs. It just continues to break down. And until we see a break of that structure, until we see this market come back at some point and break to the upside and actually break that structure, we have to assume that the market is still going to go lower. This is basic technical analysis. This is um, grade school stuff in terms of which way is the market going. Is the market going up or going down right now? Well, clearly it's going down. Now, no matter how you judge this market, we've continued to break as I draw on these straight lines here. Support, support, support. We've just you know continued to roll down with only slight retracements in that downward movement. Now, we're getting ready to go into oversold territory, coming into a support level. So there are some things that really make this 126.36 a nice area to look for longs. Um, but again, nothing saying that that's going to happen. This, we could see another big news event out in uh, Europe next week that could absolutely crush this market. And that's one of the problems with all of the sovereign issues and, and problems in that country, or in that, not in that country, the Eurozone is not a country, but um, in that area of the world, is this market, whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, is going to be heavily driven by these surprise news events that happen. Because people, and you know, this is very much a trader's market. Last week I mentioned that this was the year of the trader. And in my opinion, it, it is really going to be. And the reason for that is because we have had, um, it, is, it is so dominated by traders becoming worried about what's happening in Europe or worried about what's happening in Japan or in the U.S. and then taking positions in that direction, then kind of dialing it back after they feel like the problems are getting solved, and then all of a sudden there's a big news event that, oh, things aren't quite as great as we thought they were going to be, and oh, now here come the traders again flowing in and moving the market one way or the other. And guys, this is going to be a reality for us for an, uh, an undetermined amount of time. And so you have to be prepared for it. And again, if you don't understand some basic things about technical analysis, it's going to make it very hard for you to make any type of trading decision whatsoever. Um, and if you don't know, if you really don't know this skill of trading, it's going to be difficult. And I'll give you an example of this. We're going to go ahead and pull in the pound dollar. Now, I'm showing to the, you this, as I said before, I'm only showing you this because it, was, uh, it shows just the power of understanding technical analysis. Okay, and this is something that I put out to the syndicate members, and it's on the syndicate section of the site if you guys want to take a look at it. But I did kind of a, a little video talking about where would you want to at, the, at when we let me go into bar tick replay here so I can actually show this to you. We'll we'll take it real time. We are somewhere around here. Okay, we may even been one back from there. It's just been this nice little rally here, and we come into this nice support level. Okay. And I said to the guys, I said, you know what, as I look at this market, and I collapse my chart up here, I'm seeing a press all the way down into 148.29s. That's where I think the market is going. And we've come right up against this little support level here, and we've had a rally, and I said, okay, um, where do we look to get short on this? If you think the market's going down, and I talked a little bit about the fundamentals, which I don't normally talk about, but I thought it had relevance with this particular uh, trade, and so I did talk a little bit about what was happening in your in Great Britain and what they were doing as far as uh, you know how they were choosing to take care of their debt and, and take care of the recession and the austerity that they're doing there. And I said, all signs point to a lower pound. And I said, when you see all of that, how do you go ahead and take advantage of a short position in this market? And I pointed out just some very basic structure support and resistance levels. And again, guys, we have there are strategies you can use. Uh, we have some very, very good trading systems uh, that are designed around mechanical strategies. Um, but there's nothing wrong with just using straight technical analysis, which is what we do here every single day in the Forex Market Preview. All right, And I identified where was the previous structure support level. It's right there. All right. 
Now, where's the resistance level? The resistance level is here. And I said, okay, on this last move, this means that if the market comes into this previous structure support level, that would be a good area to look for a reversal. I said your stops will have to go above the spike high here. Because the reason for that is the market could rally all the way back up into that resistance level, but we should not get above that resistance level. And so I told the traders I'm going to be watching, and I would highly suggest you watch what happens as the market presses up into this previous structure support, because we know from our study of technical analysis that support should equal resistance. When support is broken, it should then equal resistance. So what we did was we waited. And we got the end of the week. And boom, there we moved up in, and the market held. And then the market held again. And that is a key indicator. Uh, th this, this candle right here is a key indicator that there is major trading that's happening against this. This market tried very, very hard to get over that support level and couldn't do it. I actually shorted the market right there. Again, stops have to go above the swing high. They have to. There's no other choice. You don't get, you know, there's no other plan because the market could very well travel all the way back up here and you could still have a valid trade. And in this particular instance, that's exactly what happened. The very next candle, we get an explosion. I don't know if it was a news event. I don't know if it was just a traders flooding into the market. I don't know if it was, um, let's see what time it was. Was it 8 o'clock? The U.S. market opens, very, very strong open, and we see the pound rally. Back up into, I'll go ahead and draw this line in, right into that resistance level. Now, a lot of traders look at this and they say to themselves, well, oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, it's not a very good resistance level. That, that, that didn't work, man, screw that, because what did they do? They took that support level, they sold them right there, they gave themselves a little 20 pip stop, or they put their stop right above the high of that previous candle, and then they were stopped out. And guys, this happens time and time again. And all it is, guys, is just a lack of understanding about technical analysis. It just, it, it's failure to be able to look at the chart and say, when do I know that I'm wrong? Anywhere in between this area, I'm still right. I haven't been proven wrong yet. My entry wasn't very good, okay, but I haven't been proven wrong. And actually, it's it's anywhere between this area, okay. Truth be told. So what happens next? Market trades. We get a double top here. If I drop down to a 60 minute, and I can't. Hang on, I'm not gonna drop down to 60 minute because then I'll lose my. Um, then I'll. We're in. Bartic replay here. But on a 60 minute chart, you see a nice little double top that puts in here. Okay? Then we get a break of structure. Okay? A break of structure of that double top. Double top, break of structure, retracement. What are we talking about here, guys? Well, those of you who are syndicate members or those of you who have seen the 2618 trade know that we're looking at a potential sell at the 618. So even if you saw the market spike up like this and you said to yourself, man, I'm glad I didn't get involved in that, or maybe you saw it happen and you just were too afraid to take the trade, now you're looking at double top 2618 trading event. Opportunity to sell again, even if you were stopped out. Now you're looking at 2618 opportunity to sell. So no matter what happened here, you had another opportunity. Again, simple technical analysis. Nothing crazy here. Nothing that requires any type of, you know, advanced training. All it requires is that you be able to read a chart. And boom, boom, boom. And what did I say? Traders in the syndicate, I said you're probably good at least back down into this support level. At least back down into here. And what I would expect was we'd see some continued follow-on, perhaps all the way down to 148.25. Well, guess what happened? Boom. Right into 153.90s. And now the market has stalled out. 
Now I'll drop it down to a 60 minute chart and you can see right there there's the double top, the break of structure. Followed by the retracement, opportunity to sell. 2618 trade right there. And then the market falls off a cliff. There were half a there were two different ways you could have traded, you could have played this. Both of them produced a profit. A very nice one at that. But you can see whether I had sold it here or whether I'd sold the 2618, which is about right there, I had a very nice risk reward profile on that trade. All this is is being able to read a chart. Now if you don't know how to do this, stop trading immediately. Okay? Don't continue to try and figure this out by coming to the market every day and looking at charts because unless you understand ebb and flow, market dynamics, market harmonics, some of those types of things, you're really not in a very good way. I can take a look at this and say market harmonics. Look at that. This just happens to be an advanced pattern formation as well. My good friend Andre and I were discussing this. Advanced pattern formation right there leads into a 2618 trade. How many different ways could the market tell you it was time to sell? I don't know how else to impress upon you the value of understanding this. This is a skill. Okay, guys? It's not magic. It's not something that you've got to have a, a, a whole bunch of, like, you've got to be super smart or you've got to be super good looking or a really good speaker. Now, to teach this to somebody, it takes a little bit more. I'm not going to lie to you. If you, don't, if you don't like talking to people, if you don't like being in front of a camera, if you're not very articulate, if you don't do a good job of explaining, if you don't have a lot of patience, then teaching this to someone else is probably not your forte. But guys, you don't have to be good looking, you don't have to be a good speaker, you don't have to be all that smart to be able to read a stinking chart. But you do have to have a little bit of education. And so this is a great example, this pound dollar trade that I pointed out to syndicate members um, that just gave you a, a great trading opportunity and there's still more there's gonna be another trading opportunity once we get underneath 153.90 and again when that happens I'll bring it to the attention of, uh, of syndicate members and and we'll see what they do with it I'll tell them kinda what I'm thinking and and what I think ought to happen but again it'll be up to them to take action let's look at one more thing here we're running a little bit long here, but I don't really care. Normally try and keep these about 15 minutes. We're about 18 minutes now. But as you can see, Canada came right into a support level. Now, this is a great example. I'm going to give you guys a, a good one here, a good potential trading opportunity. Okay? Um, show you guys what I'm thinking here. If the market had gotten under this major shelf here, and you guys can see looking back what a shelf that is. If we'd gotten under there, where are we going? 99.18s. You can look left, you can see the next support level, you know, somewhere in there, 99, 99s even, some, something like that. So we got a big gap here where there's nothing. Nice area because everybody's looking at the same thing. They're all looking at that shelf and saying, well, if we get underneath that, so that's going to be a pretty good area to buy. So you see natural buying opportunity, buyers come into the market there. Now, what happened? I talked about on the Euro trade looking for that, those resistance levels, right? Because as we can look at this market moving down, doesn't matter where you put those lines in market continues to make lower highs as it rallies. Well, that's just been broken, hasn't it? We've now just rallied, boom, right there, and we've broken structure. We've closed above the previous highs. So now, what is most likely to occur? In many, many cases, and I will just tell you this from my experience, it has been my experience, having done this for years and 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 years, and years that there is a high likelihood that this market will come back to test that level. 
previous structured resistance should now become support. If we drop this down to a 60 minute chart, we may even be able to find a little place, sure enough. Opportunities to buy as the market comes back down into previous structure resistance, back on the four hour now, with stops below the cycle bottom. Now there are a whole bunch of other things you can do in here as far as determining where you're going to enter and you know where you're you know what's the best opportunity. You can also see a shelf back here at around uh, the 382 retracement, and you may say, "Well, I'm going to wait for a 382 because I know that's a trend continuation Fibonacci failure pattern trade, Jason, and because I am been following you for years, and so I'm going to wait for that 382, and that improves my risk reward profile. Great, doesn't matter." What I'm saying is, even if you don't understand this stuff, even if you don't understand Fibonacci and ratio analysis, there is a trade here. And a pretty good chance that if we come back down into this area, that we're going to come back up and we're going to retest this double top high. And what does that give us from a risk reward standpoint? Pretty nice, right? We can do this all day. We can do it on every single chart. We can do it on 4-hour charts, on 15-minute charts, on 5-minute charts. We can literally do this all day. Every day. And I just get so excited um, and, and somewhat frustrated when people get frustrated with this because it is not a complicated process. What you have to do is you have to have a plan in place. You have to know how you're going to enter, what you're going to look for, how you're going to trade, and you've got to be extremely disciplined with it. Because if you're not, if you choose to take one trade and not another trade, and you know you choose to be, you know, today I'm trading the euro dollar, and tomorrow I'm going to trade, you know, the euro yen because my trading on Tuesday didn't go very well. If you start doing that type of stuff, well, now you've set yourself up for failure, and there is literally nothing that anybody can do for you. No amount of education, no amount of secret system, no amount of uh, secret sauce is going to make you a good trader because you lack the most important aspect of being a good trader, and that is discipline. So we've run really long today. Um, we've got a lot on the plate. There is a ton of stuff happening this next week when we talk about uh, the Pro Trader course. I'm not, not the Pro Trader course, excuse me. When we talk about the uh, ratio room that's opening up, you guys are going to want to be a part of all of that. Now, I've got a really big surprise for you guys. Um, I've actually put together a little presentation. Nor like I said, when we initially set this up, all I was going to do was just open it up, let everybody come in, spend a couple of weeks in the room, and that'd be it. Well, on Monday, Monday's typically not a very good trading day. So what I've decided to do was I put together a little, uh, you know, a little some exam, a, a little presentation about what's happening in the economy and what I think is going to happen moving forward and why I like trading and, and just some some thoughts because of some stuff that's been on my mind for a while. And any of you who've been with me for a while know that, you know, I'm I'm really big on that. Um, once we're done with that, then the second half of Monday is, is going to be, a, I'm bringing in, is Akil's going to be in there, and he's going to be teaching you uh, some of the basics about what you're going to be learning uh, and what you're going to be, how you're going to be trading over the course of the two weeks. Now, again, this is not the same thing as the, as the two-week uh, Pro Trader Boot Camp. This is not the same thing, okay? Akil's going to give you a very basic overview of market harmonics and structure analysis so that you're not completely lost when you come in there for two weeks. Okay, but it's not going to be a, a you know a, a full fledged training for two solid weeks. He's there to trade and he's there to you know try and make some money. Um, and then on Friday, I'm bringing B.J. Nash in. I called B.J. and I said, "Would you please uh, come and teach for free a two hour training lesson on trading psychology?" Uh, now, B.J. Many of you remember from the Pro Trader Boot Camp that I ran uh, last early last year. Uh, huge feedback from him. And guys, it is anytime ex experts like B.J. You know, don't tend to like to come in and just do stuff for free, especially when they don't have an opportunity to sell anything. Because B.J. won't be selling anything at this deal. This is literally nothing more than a two-week training. So when a guy, when I call a guy up and I say, "Hey, B.J., I want you to come and give some of your, you know." 
stuff that you charge people a lot of money for for free, and I don't want you to ever mention selling them anything, um, most people would throw up their hands and say, absolutely no way. BJ has such a heart for this. He's actually a full-time trader, and he's also a, an expert on neurolinguistic programming and neural associative conditioning, which are two of the psychology uh, principles and methodologies that we really like here. And he's coming in, and he's going to teach you guys, give you a two-hour um, training for free, and he's not going to ask for a thing in return. Huge for him to be willing to do that. So he's coming in on Friday to do that. So this is really something that you don't want to miss. And like I said, I'll, I'll throw the link underneath the video here. If, you, if for, by some you know miracle you haven't registered yet, I don't know that we can go much bigger than we are now. We're, we're approaching a you know maximum capacity if everybody shows up. Um, but uh, anyway... That be that as it may, I hope this was valuable. If this is the first time you're watching this video. Normally, there's not all this you know hoopla about what's going to be happening. Normally, it's just a video. It just so happens that we're actually doing something next week that's kind of cool. Um, but I gave you a, a trade here in Canada. It's a good idea. I showed you how you can use structure analysis on something like the pound dollar to find a great trading opportunity. Um, really good money in that. We we sold from you know basically 156 down to 154. There's a couple of hundred pips of profit in that one. And then we take a look at what's the likelihood of the euro dollar. Where's that going? And uh, you know some potential trade setups on that and ways that you can you can take advantage of that. So. I'll have some more stuff out to the syndicate this week as I find it and, and as I find value. Um, until next time, guys, good luck and good trading. My name's Jason. We'll see you next time.